I did go to a lecture at um, the Music Center in Los Angeles, and it was an Aaron Copeland retrospective. And so the panel beforehand was uh, a dancer because he did chore uh, choreography. Um, he wrote for ballet uh, movie. There was a Jerry Goldsmith was there and. Uh, then concert music and that, and they were all talking, and Jerry Goldsmith said, you know, you work so hard on your score, you know, you just have everything perfect, perfect, and then they cover it all over with sound effects. <laughs> and I thought, that's what we say the other way around, you know, we work so hard, and then they cover it all over with music. <laughs> My name is Mary Jo Lang. Uh, I work at Warner Brothers Studio. I'm a Foley mixer there. And I've worked on over a hundred films and television shows. <laughs> so uh, recently, Inside Out uh, is, is part of my presentation here. And um, Ben-Hur, just finished working on the new Ben-Hur. Um, in the past, I've worked on Schindler's List. I worked on the Matrix series, one, two, and three. Um, the Dark Knight and Dark Knight Rises, um, Frozen, Tangled, uh, a lot of Disney animated things. A Foley mixer is uh, the engineer who records. I work with two Foley artists, and they, uh, we all together look at the picture, the film, uh, and recreate the action on the film. So it used to, it was also called sync sound. So it's things that have to be done in sync with the picture. So walking, footsteps are, are a, a big part. And um, also we have, we have two sections, footsteps and props. So with footsteps, we have to pay attention to what shoes they're wearing, what surfaces they're walking on. Um, also their attitude. Are they happy? Are they upset? Are they anxious? Um, all of that comes into play in the, in the footsteps and in the props too. So anytime anybody picks up a glass or a newspaper or a book or punches somebody or kisses somebody or eats something, we do all of that. A Foley recordist, well in Britain I think they call the mixers recordists, I believe. But before I became a mixer in, in the union uh, uh, specification, a recordist is below a mixer, and I started out as a recordist. And so it, I was the mixer's assistant. I would load the machinery, I would do all the paperwork, I would um, just assist them in what to do next, what to do next. And these days, that job no longer exists. I'm all by myself and uh, have to do all of that. And with the advent of Pro Tools and QuickTime Pictures, you just don't need somebody to load a machine or to keep things, you know, um, up to up to date to where you are in a particular show you can just do it all on the computer so that's what i do in the past when we'd get the picture it would be locked these days it's never locked it's never locked until almost release time uh, they're always changing things they're doing reshoots they're um and with animation a lot of times the animation is not finished so we'll have pencil tests, which is, which is the regular film, but there's no, it's not finished, so it's just all drawings. Um, even though there's action, you can see the action, but it's, it's not filled out. Um, or sometimes we even have storyboards if they haven't gotten that far, so we have to kind of guess what they're doing. Um, and sometimes those scenes come back when they're finished because they're doing something completely different a lot of the time. <laughs> but. Um, yeah, there is no such thing as a locked picture anymore. We have an initial budget of how many days we have to do um, a project. And if there are additional scenes, or they've changed the ending, or um, there's new CGI in that they need us to um, elaborate on, they, they book more days for that. Budgets have shrunk so much, and so the days that we're allotted to do a film have shrunk a lot. 
But the supervisors are very good, the ones we work with, are very good at um, dividing the work. And so they know we only have maybe five days to do a feature. So they will cue that accordingly. So um, the what happens when we get hired, There's sometimes there's a Foley supervisor. Not always, but sometimes there is. And he or she will go through the film with the, super, with the head supervisor and um, spot what is, is needed and um, any special requirements. Uh, and then they will, what we call, cue it. They'll go in a Pro Tool session and they'll mark all the, all the clips that we need to do. And uh, so that's our map, that's our guide, guideline to know what to do. And, and so, sometimes we say, oh, you know, do you need this? Do you need that? Because we've done it so much. And uh, uh, sometimes they say yes, sometimes they say no. Sometimes if we f do finish early, we'll call them and say, you know, we, we have like half a day. Is there anything else that you would like us to do that you didn't because of the time constraint before? Is there anything on your wish list that you would like us to cover? Usually in animation, we work with the directors. They come in for a day, part of a day, a couple hours maybe, uh, but normally never see a director. We work for uh, the sound supervisor, and that person is in charge of the dialogue and the effects, uh, not the music, but everything in sound except the music. And they, are, they have the ear of the director, so they pass that information to us if there are specific things that the directors ask for. Um, we've worked with David Fincher a lot, and David Fincher is very in, in tune in sound. He loves sound. And uh, he uses the same supervisor, uh, Ren Kleiss, who's up in San Francisco and who's just tremendous. He's such a talented guy. And um, so it, it's, it's very funny because in the David Fincher movies, there's always one character in the movie that he's very concerned with the sound of their shoes. So it's always one character, could be a woman, could be a man. And uh, in uh, Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, it was um, the main girl. In, um, uh, in Fight Club, it was uh, the, uh, Helen Bonham Carter's character. Um, and, and it's very funny. So when we get that project, we say, OK, which one is it going to be this time? <laughs> but uh, we go through. 15, 20 pairs of shoes, and he picks out the one he likes the best. The most wonderful thing about David Fincher, when he did come by early, early on, um, I think uh, uh, the first film we did with him, he came by and he, in my position, most above the line, what they call above the line, are you familiar with that term? Directors, actors, producers, um, they're all above this line. And, and all the tech people are below. Most above the line people don't come by and see us and don't remember who we are or, you know, but David, immediately he knew my name and ran into him several times after that and he always said, hello, Mary Jo. And I, it impressed me so much <laughs> that he remembered uh, who I was. So, um, but no, we hardly ever get directors coming by. It's just, they're too busy, they're too busy. I think the first Matrix was was so great because they used so much of the stuff we did, and it was so gratifying. Because uh, a lot of times we'll work on a show and we work and you never hear anything or very little of what of our contribution. And uh, whether it's because of the music, it's usually because of the music, and um, or the effects or whatever. Um, and the Matrix was just uh, so so gratifying to watch because they used everything we did. And uh, it, had, it gave us a chance to be creative because there were so many interesting scenes in there that we had to make up stuff for. Um, and uh, in fact, one of the things we did was uh, uh, Keanu Reeves really liked, <laughs> we were told. And it's, uh, it's when he's in the egg, he wakes up in the, in the machine and um, he gets undone, the, uh, the machinery comes in and takes everything off of him, and then he's flushed down this tube. And as he's going by camera in the tube, 
uh, he, his hand swipes along the tube, and we did a squeak for that, you know, as he's going by, and he loved that. <laughs> So that was gratifying too, you know? It was just so nice to be recognized for, for what we do. The toughest job, boy. I, they all have elements of, of difficulty. Um, one is, is a matter of taste, you know? Some, some editors like a certain sound, and so you have to adapt yourself to what, it's not my taste always, it's you have to change with whatever they want because they're hiring me, so I have to provide what they want. Um, um, Amistad was difficult, uh, even though it seems so straightforward, but it's the whole ship and the creaking of the ship and the, um, all of that was, was a challenge. Uh, they were very particular about what they wanted, and uh, and like I said, the David Fincher thing with the shoes <laughs> um, is always fun. But um, no, I don't think any of them. We did the first Independence Day. I guess they're re they've remade it now. Um, but one one reel where the New York City gets destroyed took us a week to do one scene uh, throughout that that destruction. So we worked five days on one scene. So that was probably the, the most challenging, I guess. The theater experience is not, doesn't influence us at all. Cause we, we rec I record mono. Everything's out of the center uh, normally. Sometimes they put things in the surround like group things, uh, group footsteps or, or uh, in, a, in a factory, sometimes we have to do a background ambience for a factory. And, and in fact, we just did a, a, a television show that, um, that they were in a pickle factory and it was an organic pickle factory. So there was no machinery, everything was being done by hand. So we had to provide the background for that. And uh, so very rarely, most everything comes out of the center and, and Foley is such a detail oriented field that um, we use shotgun mics to, so we don't get any outside sound. We just get what's right in front of the microphone. Um, though I do use two microphones uh, for interiors so I can get a little of a room bounce um, off of whatever they're doing. There's usually a, what they call a Foley pre-dub. So they'll take all the Foley tracks and narrow them down to two or three um, just to make it easier on the final mix so they don't have hundreds and hundreds of tracks to work with. So um, that's done by re-recording mixers also. So they know what they have um, and where, where they want it to play or not. I think I have the only job, we all have the only job that's eight to five, Monday through Friday, in the movie business. I, we never, hardly ever work overtime, hardly ever do weekends. Uh, it's a eight hour day and we're in, we're out, and uh, then a night crew comes in and they do the same thing. They work an eight hour shift. And uh, in fact, my first job mixing was midnight to 8 a.m. on Hook. We were running three crews uh, on Hook. I, I do go to movies that I've done. If I like, if I like the movie, <laughs> I'll go see it. If I don't, I probably am not gonna go see it. Um, but uh, yeah, it's it it's because you're always curious. Like I said, you're always curious. Did they use that? You know, they were so picky about that one thing. Uh, did it end up in the movie at all? You know, and sometimes it does, and sometimes it doesn't. Um, we did uh, White Hunter Black Heart uh, many years ago, and um, there was an obsession about this woman's earrings. And we did several different varieties of her earrings. And you go to the movie and you don't really hear anything. <laughs> so I guess we were not successful in, uh, in providing that sound.